so in this lecture series we shall learn how we can design a pad eye pad eye is basically used in when we are li very lifting very heavy structures for example when we are lifting marine offshore structures or when we are lifting containers so here you can see an example here so this uh, shape here this is basically a pad eye in which the d shackle is um, used and it is I mean, like suspended with the help of the ceiling sling here so it is widely used in whenever we are lifting uh, these container structures or when we whenever we are you know like lifting the marine offshore structures so this is basically an isometric in which the things are clear so basically this is the pad eye elevation here and they are very, uh, basically of two types so one is a symmetric pad eye that is uh, from uh, this circle all both the dimensions are same second one is a non-symmetric pad eye that is the uh, it is uh, you know like asymmetrical that is the extension is only on the one side and this is symmetric pad eye which is supported from uh, these both vertical plates so basically there are various guidelines also AISC American Institute of Shield Construction also gives us guidelines Eurocode also gives us guidelines DNV also gives us a uh, various guidelines regarding the design of the pad eye so as a thumb rule the diameter of holes in the pad eye that is this hole shall match the shackle being used so this is a D shackle here and clearance between shackle pin and pad eye holes should, shall not exceed 6% of shackle pin diameter this is so that the you know like there is not much flay in the cutout here so basically when we are you know like inserting the pin of this D shackle into this hole here the gap should not be much as per this uh, guideline and thickness of pad eye at the hole shall not be less than 75% of inside width of the joining shackle so the correct design of pad eye shall should be selected based on the particular load application why we are you know like focusing on the load applica application cause the uh, you know like the purpose of this pad eye is to uh, lift something and when we are lifting in a straight manner or when we are lifting in an inclined manner the forces are different so for straight lifting angles a symmetric pad eye design should be used so when whenever you know, like we are lifting and if something upwards with the help of this pad eye it can be symmetrical but as obviously here you can see that this is asymmetrical here so whenever we are lifting in an inclined manner in that condition we use non-symmetric pad eye so for a multi-point lift as an offshore container or a frame then a non-symmetric design can be used if required, plated supports can be added to the symmetric design to increase the literal stiffness of the pad eye. So these were just you know, like simple thumb rules here. After that, here you can see that there is a small uh, line here, additional line here. And you can also see somewhat as uh, some extrusion here. That is the thickness of this plate is uh, here. For example, it is a 12 mm. In addition, there is an additional plate here. So for pad eye rated above 2000 kg capacity cheek plates must be fitted to reduce the play in the shackle pad eye connection so these are basically called the cheek plates and the purpose of this is that this uh, cheek plates is that whenever we are you know like inserting the uh, this d shackle pin here so there should not be much uh, play in the shackle pad eye connection that this there should not be much difference between this uh, d shackle pin and pad eye structure here and these are must be fitted as an additional plates so it should not be like a single element is uh, can be casted here but they should be uh, you know like uh, welded externally to this simple symmetric pad eye connection here and uh, as this guideline was as per the euro standard so that is why they are referring to as 335 uh, j2 that is the steel having this 335 newton per mm square yield strength but uh, mostly you know like when we are uh, designing as per the american or indian standards we usually go with either 250 newton per m square yield strength steel or 310 newton per m square yield strength steel and pad eye welding so all pad eyes must be welded to the primary structure by use of full penetration weld this is a very important thing here also in this picture you can see that they have basically done this full penetration welding here here also you can see that the thickness of the welding is too high here so that is why the, uh, this guideline is focusing on the welding type and welding thickness. So it is a good picture, uh, 
uh, it is a good practice to extend the base of pad eye to pass it completely through the structure member which it is connected to. If welded directly onto horizontal plate, then the plate must be specified as EMZ create to prevent delamination of the plate under tensile load. So when we are designing the pad eyes, there are various factors that we should take care of. Number one is uh, the maximum force in gross load. So whenever you know like uh, in uh, drawings we design a pad eye, we always give the ultimate uh, capacity of the pad eye. After that loading test requirements, you should know that all the pad eyes for which we manually calculate the strength, they are also uh, tested before they are applied onto a structure. There are also various vi uh, videos on the internet showing how you can uh, calculate the capacity of pad eye. So here you can see that there's this one video here. So here they are applying the force on the pad eye with the help of these hydraulic uh, jacks here. So this is the pad eye on which uh, we are, you know, like applying the load. And here you can see that they have also welded an external cheek plates here. And this is the base, uh, you know, like the base material on which the full penetration welding has been done. So here also, you know, like he is using a cylinder, hydraulic cylinder to check the strength of these pad eyes here. So now he has installed that cylinder on the top of the pad eye. And now he is applying hydraulic pressure on this uh, cylinder to check the strength, uh, to check the tensile capacity of this pad eye here. So here now he is applying the pressure here manually. So after that we need to consider dynamic amplifi amplification factor. So when we are you know, like lifting something with the help of these cranes, so sometimes it too happens that jerk may also occur. So due to that jerk, uh, additional forces may come on that container. So to consider those additional forces due to jerk and lifting, we do need to consider dynamic amplification factor also. And sometimes it do happens that we are you know like uh, designing the pad eye for offshore structures and so in those offshore structures drag load may also come when we are lifting through the water and potentially captured water weight when lifting equipment out of water so here you can see various types of pad eye with the capacities also so this is just a simple pad eye with 10 mm thickness and 65 mm length and here you can see that uh, uh, the, this dimension is 10 mm, this dimension is 35 mm, the dia of the hole is kept as 8 mm and this radius of curvature is kept as 15 mm. And uh, similarly for 750 kg, 1000, 1500 kg and when we are going for 2000 kg, so now you, we are using cheek plates here. Similarly we can uh, go for this 25000 kg pad eye capacity structure also. So the thickness here you can see that this is 40 mm so that is quite high thickness and this is 35,000 kg pad eye so this is a very large capacity pad eye with 40 mm thickness and uh, this cheek plate is of 15 mm thickness so these are some ad additional notes that has been written here so I shall attach this PDF also in your uh, video lectures so that you can uh, read them understand them and uh, in the next lecture we shall learn how we can model these pad eye plates and how we can do the FEM analysis of these plates in the StatPro software. So now in this lecture we shall learn how we can model a pad eye. So for that I have opened a uh, Autodesk Inventor file in which uh, you know like uh, someone has modeled this pad eye and the weight lifting capacity is highlighted here as 25 ton. And here you can see that uh, these are the uh, cheek plates on the left and right and in addition to that uh, he has um, made a you know like a base plate on the bottom also and here he has indicated a full uh, 
a full penetration weld here so first of all we can uh, model this whole thing in the start software also how we can model it and that i shall teach you in this lecture and before that uh, if we want to know the dimensions of this pad eye so here we can uh, left click on this measure option and uh, we can check the distance here so this is basically 200 ml and this is also approximately 200 ml so first of all we shall model this uh, base at the bottom so we can go to this uh, editor file here here we can enter the units as meter and kilonewton after that we can enter the joint coordinates so after that we can model this x is 0.2 here So these are the two nodes and after that if we want to see basically what is the dimension of uh, this point here so this is approximately in the range of 350 mm so here we can see that this dimension is approximately 350 mm so in this uh, model what we can do this is basically 200 mm we can have the midpoint also that is x.1 and after that we can make x as minus 0 0.175 and x as 0.175 here so after that uh, now we have basically uh, these three nodes here this is a center point just for the reference and after that what we can do we can uh, check this dimension here so this is also basically 200 ml that we are talking about here so we can enter y as 0.2 here and after that if we want to check this uh, center point of this uh, uh, cheek hole here so what we can do we can again go to the measure dimension here So this point is approximately 100 mm and the size of uh, this cutout is approximately 75 mm. So first of all we shall you know like have the center point of the circle at 123 plus approximately 70 mm so 125 plus 75 and uh, we can consider it to be approximately 70 mm so 125 plus 35 the center point is at 160 mm so what we can do here we can draw y as 0.16 here so this is the center point of uh, this circle here and here we need to draw a circle of 70 mm uh, diameter so in that case what we can do is that we can draw y as 0 0.35 0 0.035 so this distance is approximately 0 0.035 mm here and now we can repeat this point here and we can do the circular repetition here and through node this number of steps we can totally uh, take it as 12 and axis of rotation we can take it as z and now for our convenience what we can do is that we can also follow the link steps option so this is the joint that we are talking about here 
and this point is somewhat not correct here so what we can do as our own uh, convenience so this distance is approximately in the range of 40 mm 45 mm so we can draw this we can delete this node here and we can copy this node along y at 70 mm so after that this should be at 40 mm so now we need to draw uh, this pad i here and how we can draw that the distance between this point and this point is in the range of 40 mm so we can again do the circular repetition here so we can left click on this point here axis of rotation we can select it as z through node this and uh, number of steps we can again take it as 12 and for our convenience we can have link steps option so after that what we can do is that from this point to this point we can draw a straight line here so now we have got the basic uh, you know like uh, framing of the pad eye here so now we need to draw the plates here and how we can draw the plates we can go to this option here add four knotted plates So we uh, need additional 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, nodes here. So we can uh, click here and we can left click on insert node and add n points and here we can add n2. And after that we can again go to this uh, option here. And after that, we can just uh, delete all the beams here that has been modeled. And now, uh, if we see this model again here, so here we can see that there's this plate also that has some dimension in the plan view also. So we can measure this dimension here. So it is approximately in the range of 100 mm. So what we can do in this uh, case is that we can select all the beams here and press ctrl z as 0 0.05 here similarly for z as minus 0 0.05 here so we can uh, again draw the plates here basically our purpose is to do the fem analysis of this type of pad eye here And we can just select all of these plates here and we can go to this uh, mirror option here we can select the plane of mirror as mirror plane xy node on plane here and copy here so we can delete all we can delete all the beams in our model so now we have got a, a simple pad eye with the height as 0 0.235 and if we want to reduce the height of this uh, pad eye by 35 mm we can go to the geometry move joint and y is minus 0 0.035 and left click on retain connections here so now the height of this pad eye is 200 mm and uh, the width of this uh, plate is 100 by 350 mm so now the next step should be that we uh, need to fine tune this uh, FEM arrangement also. So we can delete this node here. We can check the diameter here. It is 70 mm approximately. And we can select all the plates here and we can go to this generate plate mesh. 
we can select three by three uh, meshing here we can select it as co quadrilateral meshing so now we have got a somewhat refined view of this uh, plate here that we can check in the 3d view also so this is the simple paradigm on which we can do our analysis so after that we can go to this load and definition option or before that we can enter the property also so here we can left click on define we can left click on thickness here so plate element thickness we, we can take it as the so thickness of uh, this pad i is approximately 38 mm or we can take it as 40 mm and the thickness of this plate is approximately in the range of 25 mm so we can take th this thickness as 40 mm and this thickness is 25 mm so here it means the 25 mm material we can select it as T and again we can select it as 40 mm so this we can select it to be 25 mm and this we can select it to be 40 mm We can check that in 3D view also. So this is qu uh, quite thick and this is somewhat uh, less thicker as compared to this 40 mm. And after that, as you know, we know that uh, these are the cheek uh, plates that have much more thickness as compared to this. So we can ch check the thickness of this plate also. So it is in the range of approximately 13.5 uh, mm. So 40 plus 13.5 uh, on one side and 13.1 on the other side. So we can consider it or you know like liberally take it to be 12 mm. So 40 plus 12 plus 12 means approximately uh, 64 mm thickness. So we can select it again on thickness. We can select it as 0 0.064. Material we can select it as steel and left click on add here. So we can select all these plates here. So we can left click here and then we can see the 3d view also so here we can see that these are the cheek plates that we have modeled here so this is the 40 mm this is 12 mm this is 12 mm so i hope you are uh, getting what uh, you know like uh, how we can model the uh, this pad eye system here so this is quite simple properties are quite simple specification we don't need to assign supports supports we need to assign here so we can select all these uh, joints here or what we can check here that uh, in this point here what we can uh, take here so the thickness is uh, welding is usually on the four sides of the plates here so what we can select here we can go to the support and we can take it as fixed and we can select all the perimeter joints here left click on assign to selected nodes and yes and after that now we are done with the support also after that we can go to load and definition left click on this uh, dead load we can uh, add it as dl live load we can enter here as lifting so dead load is obviously the self weight here the self weight we can take it as minus 1.1 uh, here lifting what we can do here we can go to this nodal load option and fy we can enter here as minus 250 as the capacity here is written approximately in the range of 25 ton so uh, 25 tons means approximately 2250 kilo newton so we can left click on add here we can select this joint here approximately and left click on scientific nodes and gears so we can reverse the direction of this uh, force here material we already entered as steel analysis we can enter 
and load and definition we can enter a simple uh, here you know like auto uh, defined combination so it shall be dead plus uh, dead load plus lifting load factor we can enter here as one and after that we can anal analyze the structure here so we can go to post processing here here we can left click on plate here and in the load combination dead load plus lifting we can select the max one mistresses here so on this point the stresses are somewhat going on the higher side that is uh, the maximum uh, stress is approximately 291 newton per m square so the grade of steel that we can use here is uh, minimum 310 newton per m square not less than that so the as we know that the yield strength of steel is 250 newton per mm square for 250 grade steel for 310 grade steel it is uh, 310 newton per mm square so it is marginally on the you know like uh, uh, approaching the yield strength that is uh, if we use 310 grade of steel here as compared to the 310 newton per mm square yield strength we are achieving 291.38 newton per mm square yield strength so we can check the shear forces also this this is the basically the shear diagram along x this shear diagram along y we can check the mx also bending moments after that these are the my so these are the global moments so the basically when we want to check the uh, stresses in the uh, pad i we need to go for this max one miss option and in max one miss we need to make sure that the maximum uh, stress is less than the yield strength of the steel in our case it is 310 newton per m square yield strength so it is safe but if this value is approximately let us say 320 newton per m square then it is not safe so as a trial what we can do here we can increase this uh, capacity to let us say 300 and uh, 300 kilonewton so if we apply this force here and go to post processing here plate and max one miss stresses here we can see that the stresses go up to 350 newton per m square so in that case the 310 newton per m square yield stress plate is not safe so what we can do here we can uh, increase the thickness of this part here so instead of 64 we let us say we, if you want to check for 80 mm and instead of this 40 mm let us say we want to check for 50 mm so when we go to the post processing mode here we can go to plate and check max one mistresses so here we can see that now again the loading is safe that is 280 newton per m square again the alloy against the allowable loading of 310 newton per m square yield strength of steel so we should know what exactly do you mean by this 310 newton per m square yield strength so the yield strength of steel is the strength at which the steel uh, steel starts yielding so 310 newton per mm square so uh, there are either 210 yield stress 330 310 so there are various type of steel that is available in the market and in europe uh, the you know nomenclature is different for india the nom nomenclature is different for america again the Euro nomenclature is different so there can be either 210 newton per m square 240 410 3 240 310 so this was the strength that we had considered in our pad i design so I hope the things are now clear to you that how you can do the pad eye design. So you can confidently go with the FEM analysis in case you need to design such type of structures in your office or in your, uh, you know, like research projects in the college. So rest assured, if your uh, modeling is good and if your loading criteria is clear and your understanding is good regarding the FEM design and start, then the results are uh, 95 to 98 percent correct uh, in the start software but if you do some mistake then these type of you know like results can go haywire also so do double cross check with the help of manual calculation also AISC has some various formulas regarding the pad eye design also so in my office what I usually do is that I design the pad eyes manually with the help of AISC design guidelines 
and after following the ASC design guidelines uh, as a double cross check I do the FM analysis of the paradise also to make sure that the yield strength of steel is not exceeding when we are going for the maximum loading uh, criteria for the paradise.